Now that we've made it through the uh, first step of the processing, this initial processing, which on my computer uh, took about 20 some minutes, um, on your computer might take a little bit longer, uh, we can see that we've got some kind of an interesting result, which is here. There are these uh, different colors. There's some red colors over here. There's some uh, blues and greens. And then there's something going on uh, below here as well. If we zoom in, and you can use your mouse to zoom in. There's the mouse ball, the track ball you can use to, to zoom in or zoom out. Um, what we can see here is um, a sparse point cloud, which has been generated of the landscape that we are mapping. And in this case, it's the RC airfield. You see these interesting sort of shuttlecock-like things up here. These are um, the, the calculated position of the aircraft, um, the UAV, when it was taking uh, the images. Um, and so we see some interesting things here. We see these red guys as well. These were um, uh, photos which were uh, unable to be calibrated. After completing the initial processing, in addition to seeing this screen, you should also get a, a quality report. And this is the quality report that I got. And there's, there's actually a, a lot of useful information in here, including sort of some preview images of your, um, you know, of your initial uh, ortho mosaic, just based on this first processing run. Um, but then also, uh, you can get this sort of first look at the digital surface model, which is looking a little rough right now, but that's okay. And uh, other information. And so it's, it's worthwhile spending some time on here. We can see that these red guys, they, they had some uh, problems. Uh, they were uncalibrated for whatever reason. And then we can also see this screen here, which shows information about the number of overlapping images. And you can see we had enough, 227 images for this area is quite a lot. And those green ones are where we had five or more overlapping images, which for creating uh, digital surface models and three-dimensional um, models, that's fantastic. You really want a lot of overlap from all sorts of different um, angles and perspectives. These red areas are places where we just had maybe one image or so uh, which had some overlap. And these will be problematic images, which would correspond to those places where we had you know, some red guys, where we just had a few images which were overlapping. There's some more information here about the, the, the camera parameters and then some um, uh, this information about geolocation information. And actually this is not uh, worthwhile uh, considering too much right now because we haven't added in our, our actual ground control point information. So um, we can do a lot better than what that is, is signifying. Uh, if we also look at this one, now it has moved us into what's known as the ray cloud view, the ray cloud view. We can go back, back to the original map view and we can see these, these guys. We can see our flight path and we can see the underlying remote control airfield here. I just want to, I just want to point something out. If you keep your eye down here, you can see the, the uh, uh, projection information uh, for our coordinates, which is, this is standing for WGS 84 and then UTM zone 5 north. This is a, 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 a type of a projection system, Universal Transverse Mercator, and these are uh, the units. It's in meters, and so if you keep your eye on here, I'm going to go up and down, you'll see those numbers are changing as I move n uh, south to north and now north to south. And it's really that second number which is changing quite a lot. It's that 21678, right, it's dropping down in meters. If I were instead to going to move east to west, uh, back and forth, in the east-west direction, the first number, that 286 number, is going to be moving quite a lot. So the way that UTM coordinate system is set up, we've got an easting and then a northing. So that first number is an easting and the second number is a northing. And that's actually quite important because that is related to our ground control point information, which we collected with a differential GPS when we set up out there over those white X's. And so if we are wanting to make the, the position information on this data set as best as we possibly can get it, we need to include some information from those ground control points. And what we can include are the coordinates of those ground control points. And so after doing the processing with the, uh, the differential GPS, we had four points in the airfield. 
point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four. And for each of those, we have an easting, which is this 2, 8 number here. We have an easting. So it goes point name, comma, easting, comma, northing, comma, and then the z value or the elevation. And these are all in meters. And this is one of the reasons that we use Universal Transverse Mercator is because it's in meters. It's a lot easier for me to understand differences in coordinate position in meters than it is in you know, hundreds or thousands of a decimal degree. It's, it's much easier for me to think in meters. Um, so point number two uh, has an easting of this and a northing of this and an elevation of this and so on. And so this file here, we're going to bring in uh, to PIX4D, we're going to bring this file in. And so we're going to go up to process and let me try to figure out where this, oh, oh it's not, sorry, it's under project. Project, ground control point, manual tie point editor. So this is the one. And actually, um, you can see the default here is in latitude longitude. And we want to edit our ground control point coordinate system. We want to edit this guy. And we want it, we're going to edit it from a list. And that's the datum, but the, the, the coordinate system we want to use is, we're going to pan down in Hawaii, we're in zone 5 north, and they do it in sort of a weird way here. We're going to go through the 40s, and then we're going to get to, and then we got to go to the 50s, and then we're going to, okay. So WGS 84 UTM zone 5 north. When you collect your GPS information, you need to know what coordinate system it was collected in. When we collected ours, it happened to be in WGS UTM Zone 5 North. We say OK. We say OK. So we got that guy. And now these have changed from latitude longitude to now X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. So we're going to import that file. We're going to import that file. And we're going to browse for the file. And it happens to be in this RC airfield. File. It's this airfield, airfield GCP CSV. We're going to open that guy. We're going to say OK. And fantastic. It brought them in. It brought them in as three dimensional ground control points with an X, an easting value of this for point one and a northing value of this and so on. We're just going to leave these horizontal accuracy default values and we're going to, um, we're just going to say OK at this point. And you can see in the in the map we've brought in these four these four guys. Let's go to the the ray cloud. And if you look at the ray cloud, you'll see these these blue X's, these new blue X's which are in the scene, right? And so these blue X's are our ground control points that we've that we've brought in. We've brought into play these ground control points. And now the next step is to actually process this initial data set. And, and tie the, the, the point cloud information we have here uh, to those ground control points. And so that's what we're going to do next.